what I was telling is uh, two types of uh, two types of communication is there wired and wireless. Wired we have a twisted pair, a coaxial cable, twisted pair and fiber. And uh, in uh, wireless we have uh, blue. What is that? Radio. Infrared radio waves. Microwave infrared. infrared. Now we are seeing the first in wired network. Wired network, if you see, we have centrally one, one terminology is followed, bandwidth signaling method and distance limitation. So based on that, we we'll decide that. Now I am going to tell you some fiber terminologies. Okay. These are the twisted pair and the co coaxial cable. Now I am going to teach you the fiber terminologies. The fiber terminologies, if you see, we have two types of same way. 1000 base XX, right? 1000 base LX, right? Then we have LX XX, I'll tell you. What is SX? Short wavelength, LX long wavelength. See that the distance between this is more. It's called wavelength. It's more, right? So shorter wavelength will travel long distance. Longer wavelength will travel less distance. SX LX. Then we have single mode, multi mode. In fiber, we have two types of cable single mode cable, multi mode cable. What is single mode? What is multi mode? Single mode, multi mode. Now, single mode means how do you send signal? What is the method you send signal? Like, for example, uh, you want to send in a copper, copper. How do you send your zeros and ones? Like, I'm say, I want to send zero, one, zero, one, one, one. Like this, I want this, I want to send it in wire. How do you send in copper wire? Voltage. Mm, voltage. Like, voltage means if you see the diagram, it will be like this. 0 means nothing, 1, again 0, 1, 1, like this it goes, correct? So, this is the free voltage. What happens in fiber? How you send the same thing in fiber? In what form? Light. So, light is there means? No light, 0. Now, to send the light, you need to have one source. If the source is LED, right? Light emitting diodes, correct? If there is only one source is there, one light ray, then that is called single mode. If multiple light rays, example, see here, source multiple, then we call it as multi mode. Source is only one light, one light ray, that is called as single mode. Single mode is actually travel long distance, multi mode travel less distance. Single mode is expensive, multi mode is cheaper. Single mode is used for telecom and uh, cable TV operators. Okay, see here, multi mode is used for general purpose, our purpose. We use multi mode. But if you want to go for telecom operators or service providers, no? they will be sending in multi mode. I'm sorry, single mode. Multi mode is used for our purpose, general land purpose. Now, when you connect two fibers, you will have different ways of connecting physical contact. Right? That is called the first is flat, PC, UPC, APC. So if you are using a APC connector, then you have to go this side also APC connector. If you are going PC connector, you go PC connector. Otherwise, the polished method is changing, na? cutting method. How you cut. See, this is only nothing but cutting method. See how you cut the cable, uh, fiber cable. You cut straight, that is flat. If you cut like this, is polished. If you ultra polished, it's more and more angle. If you cut like this slight angle beginning, then this is angled. You need to be very careful which type of uh, character we can decide uh, they have done the character, right? Based on that, you have to do the same thing. Now, in uh, RJ for in uh, coaxial cable, what is the connector called? Best of B N C connector, British Naval connector. 
remember yeah. what is the connector for uh, ethernet cable like our uh, twisted pair cable rj45 RJ for uh, data for voice nowadays or uh, uh, telephone old old telephone with rj11 the two types was there right generally we use maximum nowadays rj11 is ruled out your direct ip telephone cable now so we all have all this uh, back side is our rj45 But still, RJ11 is a default. It uses four pairs, four cables. RJ11. Right. Now, what about fiber connectors? Fiber has different connectors: LC connector, SC connector, MC connector, LC connector, MT RC connector. Like the different types of connectors are. There. So fiber has different connectors. So this is called what? Fiber connector. So understand this cable part. Any doubt? This any doubt is there? Next, I'm going to tell you. We are going to understand twisted pair a little bit deeper because we are going to use twisted pair for lab. Even cable in labs also we use twisted pair, and the uh, serial cable for lab lab twisted pair. So we have to understand now twisted pair. Twisted pair has two types of twisted pair. One is shielded twisted pair. Another one is unshielded twisted pair. STP, UTP. What do you mean by shielded twisted pair? Every pair will have one aluminium foil cover. This aluminium foil is grounded in both sides. So any electrical signal comes, it cannot actually uh, damage the cable. So that is called shielding. The shielded twisted pair is mainly used in industrial networks and the labs. Clear on this. Now next, we are to see different types. Now I am going to take UTP. This is we are going to use for LAN. Right? In that three types are there. Flat or console cable, strike through cable, crossover cable. So console cable is this cable. You see this? This cable. One side will be DB9, which will be RJ45 connectors. DB9 will be connected to PC. Now sometimes what happens? Your PC will not have a serial. We have a USB port. We need a converter. USB to serial converter. Then you connect this to here. This is the converter. Understand? Then you connect to the laptop or your PC. So this case will go to where? This RJ45 will go to console port. Console port. Every device has a console port. Then you connect this RJ45. And your side you connect with USB port. If you don't have this port, uh, common port, serial port. Then you connect to the USB port, the converter, and connect. So then you can log into the device and configure. For configuring purpose, we use this cable. This is called console cable, flat cable, or roll cable. Okay, mainly for configuring. It's not data transfer. Understand? So what do you mean by data transfer? Okay, I'll tell you this part. You remember whole class? You have to remember this. Uh, I may be told you in session later. If you remember, I again tell you. Easy to uh, find the For any communication, there are three planes are there. What are the three planes? One is management plane, system layer remember. Then control plane, data plane. Remember this. So data plane is what? User is sending data to user. The traffic between user to user. Now I am sending a mail to you. The mail is traveling through switches and reaching to the my you through your my PC to your PC. That comes that data. That traffic is called user data plane traffic. Now device is sending. Now some device is sending to dumb device. Like uh, R1 is sending to R2. Some update or something like that. Device to device. That communication, the traffic is called what? Control plane. They do device. No, I am not sending. User is not sending. 
or uh, administrator is not doing anything. It is device itself is telling, okay, I have this update he is giving, routing update, you know, that is called what? Control plane traffic. Next is traffic, right? Management plane. Management plane means, now administrator is sending to device. I want to configure something. I want to log into the device, right? Right. So that is called what? Management plane. Now management plane also two types of management plane is there. Okay, we have labs. All the labs we have. But I'm just telling you now so you can understand from me. PC one. So this is one connectivity. I have a PC connected to switch switch to router. R one router. Now this FH zero 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 one IP address will be there. I will log. I will tell at this IP address. What I will do? You know what is tell at? I will tell at this IP address. Then I log into the R one and configure the R one. This is called in band management. Right? I have a router. I have a console port. I have a PC. From there, I connect to the console port. This cable is what cable we are studying now. So here, this console port or management port, you know, right? This is management port or console port. We are connecting directly to that port, and we are configuring that where we are not involving anything in the data side. So it's directly going to management plane, and we are involving the management plane, but. We are not using the same interface. We are using a dedicated, separate, dedicated interface for management. That is called what? What type of management? Out of band management. O B B. O O B means somewhere you can see this word. O O B. What is O O B? Out of band management. O O B. Okay, so do you when you want to configure through auto band management, we we'll go through console cable, console port, or management port. Okay. But minimum console port will be there for all the devices. Some places they have management ports. So that is what auto band okay. management. When you log into the man console port, you need a cable, right? That physical cable is called console cable. Clear on this now? Okay, this is console cable. Next is now I have same example. Okay, switch to PC. Switch to router. We have connected some cable, data cable. Yes. We call it data cable. That is management cable. This is what cable? What we call this management cable, right? Now I can say like this. This is management cable. This is this two is called what? Data plane, na? Right? Data cable is. So data cable. If you see the two types of data cable is there. One is strike through, other one is cross over. Now strike through means different devices. Now I am connecting through switch PC to switch. Then we call it as switch. We switch to switch different devices. Switch to switch same device. Then you have to go for crossover. Different devices straight through same devices crossover. Now, um, one exception is there. This is called exception. One exception is there, where PC to router, as per the formula, different devices, right? It's supposed to be what cable. Uh, This is to run what cable? Different devices. Uh, that is the general formula. But what happens here? PC has already a routing function. Though we say PC, but the router is as a router only. Router to router means what? Now? 
So at PC journal is always cross working. This is one exception. So write down three steps. One is same devices cross over, different devices try through PC to router cross over. this next you will see how to find crossover and straight so very simple method they have color codes so total how many colors we have so we have this total eight bags na eight colors are there what are they if you take a cable one pair one will have uh, pure orange, one will have one orange line. Take two cable, pure orange, one will have one orange line. So we call it white orange. Orange, white orange, like this one. Orange. Second is white orange. This is one pack. Understand now? Next, uh, blue. White blue. Second pack. Green. White green. And finally, brown. White brown. Now, these are the 8 colors, color codes. These color codes are defined, standardized by an organization called EIA, EIA. Electronics Industrial Association, Alliance, uh, Telecommunication Industrial Association. So this organization actually defines this code. There are two types of standards they created, I68A, I68B, we call it as class A, class B, something like that. And every class will have two color codes. What are they? Strike through cable color code, cross over cable color code, strike through cable color code, cross over cable color code. Now, when I say strike through cable color code, I will take a cable. Now, this cable will have two tags. Jack left hand side jack, right hand side jack, correct? Mm -hmm. Now how many cables will come, color will come? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 cables, right? Same way, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, okay? Now this one and this one, same color, then that is strike through. Different colors, 1 to 8, this side 1 to 8, it's the same color. There is a color code, you have to follow the same color. You say how to find out strike through. Take these two cable and say first and first is same color, strike through. First and first is different color, cross over. General, that's easily finding out that. But there is a standard color code, same color has to be followed. You cannot say one and one is same color. No, no, no. One has to be orange, mm -hmm. orange white. This is also orange white. Not blue, blue. Oh, no, no, it's correct. But we are not talking about the color number, we are talking about the color. So you see this, now you will understand. One, what is the color code? White green. This is 
So now so we can just do that. Left hand side, right hand side. Think like this. This is left hand side jack. This is the right hand side jack. Both sides, one is what? White green. White. Two is green. green. Three is white orange. Four is blue. Five is white blue. Six is orange. Seven is white brown. Eight is brown. If it is both sides same color, then this becomes what? 568A. Right? 568A straight through table. Now, same example here. First is white orange. Second is orange. Third is white green. Fourth is blue. Fifth is white blue. Sixth is green. Seventh is white or brown. Eighth is brown. Then this is called what? 568B straight through table. Now, left hand side is white orange. But right hand side is white green. Then that becomes cross over table. Now, take these two cable, two connectors you hold in your hand and see left hand side, right hand side. Or left hand side is white orange, right hand side is white green. Then that is called what? Uh, left hand side white orange, first pin. Second, this side left hand side, first pin is white green. 568B cross over cable. Understand like that? You clear on this? Now, second pin. Tell me the answer. Second pin. Okay. This can get fixed. This is this is the only two things. Uh, it is fixed all over the world. You have to follow. See, otherwise they will not give certification. See, there is a uh, certification board. Mm -hmm. They'll come and check your cable. Mm -hmm. If you don't follow the same standard, they will not certify you. You are not certified as per the industry standards. Okay, understand? See, protocols where we are using. Like, well, you can create your own voting protocol. No? You can create a new thing. It's not that you create deep code. Who cares? You can create deep. But the problem is when you go for a uh, public network, deep nobody don't know. So everybody follow RIP or EIZ to OSPF. Same way, when you go for a public, uh, you go for a customer, customer will ask you, are you certified? Certified company. Did you certify your cable? No, yes, I will certified. Which standard? EATAS 568B standard. You have to tell that this standard we have certified. If you say I have done based on this standard, then this color code has to be followed. Any one of this. Is it B or is it B? Otherwise, you cannot say as per this ISO standard. When they say ISO 2000, uh, uh, 12,000, I have certified. Then the 12,000 will say these colors you have to follow. And the same color you have to follow. Otherwise, you say this so working is not a problem. Understand? No? As I told you, one and one is same, work, work it will work. But when you go for standardization certification part of point of you know, you will fail. Understand? No? Functionality fail. Because worldwide all are following same standards. Mm -hmm. So it's a, you know, people know okay, you are IAT, F I C T B standard means okay. They are not like you are doing this because they also know what is the standard. No? So this is good for your uh, business development. Okay, you want to write on this? Check photograph or write on what all. We'll go next. You have the presentation, right? Yeah. Okay, thank you. With that, yeah, same thing. Uh, land interfaces, Ethernet ports, pass Ethernet port, gigabit ports. I told you 10 Mbps, 100 Mbps, 1000 Mbps. LAN interfaces, serial, inter serial port, ISDN, BRI, TRI, BRI, PRI ports, even T1 ports. Now, this is the connectors RJ45, RJ11, DB, DB9, BNC connector. Uh, this is the serial connectors. These are the serial connectors. Let's try. Clear on this. So the serial connectors. Let's try. The N one is a telephone number. Ah, for small one. Four, four, four pins are there. This is eight pins. Eight cables. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This, you have to hold like this. The lock has to go back. Okay. Next. Uh, okay. Then, so any doubts you want to see? Any doubts you have to clear? 
Uh, you have any doubts with this or discuss? Next, I'm going to teach you troubleshooting approach and the methodologies. Now, first, I'm going to talk about troubleshooting approach. Eight steps. The first topic is troubleshooting approach. In that first topic is eight steps. Step one. Problem report. Step 2. Collection information. Step 3. CIPR. You write down this. CIPR, uh, CIEI. Step 4. MA potential causes. Step 5. Pro proposal hypothesis. Step 6. Verify hypothesis. Step 7. Problem resolution. Now, when you get a problem in company, like a customer calls and tells you, first what you have to do, you have to create a report saying that these are the problems, sir, and uh, this is uh, your, uh, call your uh, customer number. And in future, you have to refer, uh, use this number for communication. And uh, this is the solution we are looking for. Input criteria is this because of this reason, you raise a problem. And output is this criteria. We are trying to solve this problem. Okay. I will forward this this to this my team. Okay. So then you start processing. So within 24 hours, the problem will be solved. Right. You can call me at any time. Then you can create one report and submit to him. So he sees that as a SMS or mail or whatever. He gets that first. When you raise a problem, first he has to get a report that you raised a problem. This is the problem. Within this hour, it will Please time will be the one time leave period they will say. Based on time you have to finish it. As per your SMA. So this is what you So this is information you send it to the customer. The first step. Second step, you collect information. Now you yourself can collect or you can send as an engineer to collect. Right? So what he collects, sir, you said this problem in your report. So based on the report, I'm asking you this happened. Or, like for example, monitor is not working, like display is not coming means will you power on the monitor or not, what lights are blowing in the CPU, what color is coming, is the monitor any lights are coming, like a yellow color, green color, you need to press the button, cables are properly connected, power on is there, all these things will check, collect information. Then, he will examine it, whatever he's, you say, he will not believe 100%. Step 3 is, if you are a customer, you are not a technical person, he will have to examine it. One or two times, he will tell that, can you type this and see, can you press this and see, he will examine it from the phone or real, the physical, right? Then he will solve one by one problem. Sir, okay, sir, now I understand your problem. I collected information. Now, one by one, I'll tell you, sir, can you remove the power cable and take another power cable and connect and see? Do you have any other monitor, sir? Can you, uh, one by one, he will keep on eliminate. This is not the problem, this is not the problem, this is not the problem. Then he will eliminate. Potential causes. This may be the problem. He has some 10 list. Generally, they say restart the router. This is one of the potential causes. They know. Sir, can you restart the router, sir? Then will I also to metal call now? The, the, the service engineer will say same thing. He restart and see. If it's not working, okay, restart and see, then he'll go next. Like that, they will eliminate one by one issues. Whatever known issues. Then finally, he says, okay, if it's not solved. Then I propose, sir, I will send you, this problem is uh, internal, internal problem, sir. So it's our customer side problem. So I will send this to the team and they will propose. He will, she will, uh, the engineer will propose one hypothesis, right? 
then then the verification of the hypothesis will happen. After that verification is done, problem is resolved. Then they will ask feedback, you know, how is the support, all these things. So there are how many steps? Seven steps. These seven steps can be done in two approaches. Seven steps can be done in two approaches. The first approach is called structured approach. Second approach is called a shoot from hip approach. So I'll tell you what's the different thing. Structured approach. Steps are same, but sometimes we go shoot from uh, hip approach. See. Structured approach. First, CAPR means problem report. Collect information. Eliminate potential causes. Uh, examine information. Eliminate potential causes. Problem uh, hypothesis. Verify hypothesis. Problem resolution. Now see the error mark. Going. If the verification is good, yes, then what happens? Problem resolved. No. You have to do again. Any other have anything other thing you can gonna propose. If you don't know what you don't have anything to propose, then again start examining the correct information. Anything we missed out on. There's more information you have to collect. Understand? This approach is called what? Structure. Sometimes when I get the information, collected the information. I'll have a hunch. Oh, this is the problem I know. Okay, I'll propose one thing. Can I do this? You'll ask. If you do that, after that, it may solve. If it doesn't solve, again you go for structural approach. This type of approach is called what? Shoot from the hip. You want to understand this? Now what is happening? He is not eliminating, examining the information or he is not eliminating the potential causes. The 10 checks, check box, we start the router, nothing is done. He directly is telling, okay, this is the problem, right? I tell you one solution, can you do this? Is that solved, no? Good. Doesn't solve, then what you will do again? You start the proposed or you can start and say. This is called what? Shoot from the hip. You skip the shoulder. See, from the head with shoulder, hip, foot base. You skip the scroll. shoulder, is called what? That is going to hit the front. Understand? If I don't. This flow you have. Now I'm going to teach you methods. There are total six methods are there. First is top down method. When a customer comes and tells you, see sir, my browser is not working. I'm able to do everything, I'm able to work, but only my browser is not working. Then you will check the cable or you check the application. So that is physical layer, application layer. So start from application layer. So the answer is top down approach, a top down method. Now they say there is no internet connection and there is an into mark coming in that computer symbol. So I don't know what is the problem. Then you check which layer. Cable. Both the internet is not coming, but here browser is the problem. You take top down method. It is a 
link is done, you take bottom up method. Now next is divide and conquer method. Divide and conquer method means I don't know, really don't know which side is the problem. It's upper layer or lower layer. So what I will do is ping. If ping is success, then L1, L2, L3, L4 is working fine. Problem is in upper layer. Ping is failure. Unreachable, we say. Ping unreachable. L1, L2, L3, L4 is the problem. That is divide and conquer. How to find out which layer problem. Then, very big network. I don't know where is the problem exactly. So what I will do? I have five, for example, see here, I have a PC here, it's connected to router, router, like this, then connected to a PC, I mean. something like this, okay. Now, PC1 is not able to ping. PC1 is not able to ping PC2. So where is the problem now? How do you find out? I am just giving you a simple example but real time so many days. So how do you find out? So what you do here, you just first ping from here to here. Okay, ping. The ping is success. Hmm? Before this, you ping yourself. Self ping. First ping is what? Self ping. Then you do next hop. First top is what? Router. Your default gateway. This is called default gateway. DG. So you ping default gateway. Success. Then you ping next hop. Success. Next hop. Success. Failure. Now where is the problem? This is also success. So where is the problem? Between this link is not. Right? This is called follow the traffic path method. So you know the path. I'm just saying real time you do a thousand ways. Except no path you are going. You know the path. Hop by hop you try to communicate. Which hop you're not able to connect. So then you know that that hop is the problem. It comes reverse also. You can start pinging from PC1 to PC2, PC2 directly. Then come here. You can go reverse also. However you want. The best is start from self -pay. Clear? This is one method. Another method is comparing configurations. Now two routers are there. Both are having same branch setup, branch, uh, same cabling, everything is same. Network is same. But one is working, one is not working. So you just ask him, can you send me the your working uh, configuration? And I'll see my non-working configuration, comparing which is missing out, I'll add that. Then start working, correct? Yeah. Next is component swapping. Like, uh, Mm, display is not coming. You told the customer said display is not coming. I told him, can you change the monitor and see? Hmm? After changing the monitor, yes, sir, now display is coming. So, what is the problem? Monitor is the problem. How do you find out? By swapping the components. It may be router, it may be uh, switch, it may be PC, or it may be monitor. So, by just swapping this up, you'll find out what is the problem. So, these are all called what? Popular methods. Clear on this? Okay, we have finished troubleshooting methods. Next, we are going for IP address. Now, first, computer addressing. We are going to study how many addresses we have in the computer. How many? MAC address is one. Like that, how many addresses we have? IP address, IP address MAC address. Have you written this? Yeah. IP address, MAC address. Anything else? Session layer uses what address? But keep the data separate. Port address. Port number or port address. Uh, so, now you say three addresses. IP address, MAC address, port address. Now let us write down simply like a simple analogy. Now, I am staying in a hotel, uh, like a Taj hotel. So I, am, I ordered a pizza. So pizza boy was asking the address. So I told him, my room number is not 3. 
right? Room number 303, my hotel door number, door number 6, street address, and area address. 6 MG road. Okay, Bangalore. Now I gave address to him. So he, he came to 6 MG Road, Bangalore, and uh, it's a portal. He went and asked which is the room number. He came to the room number and gave the pizza delivered at that. Same way, when a package is traveling to a, towards the host, end host, the host has to also give address. So this addresses is divided like this. So first room or room address, room number or room address is equal to port address. Once you reach to the hotel, you have so many rooms in the hotel, right? Which room you go? That defines your room number. Same way, once you reach a computer, there are so many applications running. Which application you go? That defines your port number. Understand? Now, I want to physically reach. Then I have a physical address. That is door number. Now, logically, I want to reach. There are two addresses in logically. One is host address, street address, and the area address is network address. Now these two addresses is actually called the logical address. Two addresses is called what? Logical address. Now physical address, what is the protocol? Logical address IPv4, IPv6, IPv talk, IPX, IPX is the old address novel. This is novel, this is Mac, Macintosh. Right? Clear on this, but what we are using now? IPv4 and IPv6. Now I am going to teach you all these formats. First, port address. What is the length? Now let us write down this. Okay, now I'm going to give you the format. Yes. Now what is the length? First, port address. Tell me. What is port address? To identify and keep the data separate for each application protocol. Right? Example, Chrome HTTP 80. Right. What is the length? 16 bits. How it is represented? Decimal numbering system. And uh, what is the full range? 0 to 65,000. Meaning, because why 65,000? Because 2 power 16, 16 bits, na? 2 power 16 is 65,536. So the range starts from 0 to 535. Now this uh, port range is divided into three blocks, you know right? Yeah. Well known? Yeah. So now the physical address if you see. Example uh, L2 forwarding the data switching. So example uh, frame relay JC number, Ethernet we have MAC address. Okay. 
Physical address or different physical addresses are there. Don't think only MAC address is physical address. Even if you go for a frame delay, no MPLS, different different numbers will come. So example, Ethernet is MAC address. Okay. Now Ethernet, if you do it, 40 to 48 bits, what is the length of Ethernet? How it is represented? 12 hexa digits. Right? And divided into 224 bits. First 24 bits is called OEY. So this will be called VA, you know this, right? Right? This is all clear. Now this is hard coded by vendor itself. So unique address, no duplicate address. This is physical address. Now third format, logical addresses. So what are the protocols we have in logical address? IPv4, IPX, IPv4, IPv6, IPv4. As I told you, network address is equal to area address. Host address is equal to device address. Right? Or you can call it as um, state address. IPv4. IPv4 how many how many bit length? Thirty two bits. Uh, divided into four octaves. See here. Four octaves. Represented in dot decimal notation. Example is one eighty two one sixty eight one dot one slash twenty four. IPv6 one twenty eight bits. Divided into eight groups of four extra digits. Correct? Represented in thirty two extra digits. Example, what I given here, 2001 slash colon, double colon, uh, single colon, uh, 1 slash 64, 128 bits. Understand? Clear on this? How it is getting? 8 means 8241 you have to do, you know, right? Yeah. How to do this conversion? Clear? Yeah. Now, for easy representation, we remove continuous zeros, you know this? And make like this, simplify. You can remove this uh, backside, uh, we call it prefix zeros. Right? You can get like this, simplify. Okay. Now, I stop this here. Clear on this, you return? Okay, now I'll ask you again question. What is the, what is the length of IPv4? How it is represented? Divided into four octaves. Okay. Now I'll give you one example. You need to tell me the binary conversion. Okay. Then we'll start the basic topics. Conversion will check one time. I'm going to give an IP address to you. You need to convert and tell me. 192.168.1.1. Right? What is the binary conversion?
Now, so one one zero zero one sixty right? So one sixty how much? One ninety one one seven one point eight plus sixty four. Sixty four plus eight. How much? One sixty four. One point eight plus sixty four. One point eight plus sixty four is one ninety. So now conversion we understood, right? Next I'm going for V6. IPv4, added to bit address, divided to four octets. For easy representation, we commit dotted decimal notation. The full range of IPv4 is 0 0.0.0.0 to 255.255.255. Right? All zeros, all ones. Right? Now class, this range is divided into five classes. Class 1, class 2, host range, A, B, C, reserved, D and E. So host means end, end computers. What we can configure is 1 to 126, class A, 128, 191, first octet. Right? How do I am saying different? How do I am classifying by first octet? Four octets now. The first octet is 1 to 128, 126, that is class A. The first octet is 128 to 191, class B. First octet is 192 to 223, class C. Right? Then these all three ranges are for host. Now I want to go to class D and class E. Right? So class D you see uh, 224 to 239. Class E 242 to 53. Understand? Now class D is reserved for multicast, class E is reserved for RME labs. This is the classes. Right now. So one by one you have to understand what is class, how do you identify class? Right, first point. We have this. Okay. Next, uh, now, next, uh, I'm going to teach you something called a subnet mask. So, what is subnet mask? Okay. If you to understand subnet mask, first you have to understand the format. I told you there are two addresses of the logical address. What are they? Hmm? First is 
host address second is now host address tells about the device address every device like a network address is what for the whole network area area address right now when i say device address i need to give you one ip address network address is different how do i find out these two addresses okay every network remember every network is reserved with the two addresses one is network address other one is broadcast address then third category comes host addresses these two addresses are reserved you cannot touch them you cannot change this understand no so every network when i take any network when i say network it has to have one network address that is name of the network what we call this name of the network so if somebody ask you what is your company address address network company address then you have to say that company network address your, your branch network address so branch ka network address is one address that is name of the network network address understand no broadcast address means what within this network i want to send to everybody in the network then what address i'll put this is an address then broadcast address one to all understand broadcast address so every network will have network address broadcast address host addresses now i'm going to teach you how to find network address how to find broadcast address how to find host address to find all these things we need to learn something called subnet mask for this i am going to teach you to find out this three addresses na three categories network address broadcast address and host address range host address range and it to find out correct how the host address and what are the other host addresses in country now for example i will take one address 192.168.1.1 that's it i know now you tell me what is network address for this what is the broadcast address for this what is the host address host address range what are the what is the range of the host addresses from what at first address last address then range range means first and last address <coughs> now to find out all these things i am going to use a subnet mask what is subnet mask find out standard bit address means same like ip address but represented dot this but it is used for what purpose what What is the purpose? What is that? Network ID means what? Reserved one or most ID for each. See, what is network ID? Which network? Which class? Can you read it? Can you read? Identify what? Network ID or which one? Network bits. Ah, so. For example, I have one twenty eight dot one sixty eight dot one dot one. How many bits it is? I will refer to the two bits. In this thirty two bits, tell me how many bits are network bits? How many bits are host bits? you got the answer to identify this in the ip address how many bits are network bits how many bits are host bits we use subnet mask that's it this is the function of subnet mask nothing extra nothing more nothing less subnet mask function is what to identify network bits and the host bits in the in the ip address very important point huh? People confuse with subnet mask. So many things is nothing it is doing. It is just telling you how many bits are network bits, how many host bits in IP address.
right? Now, I will give an example. And I will do it with 32 bits, right? Subhead mask is what? So now I will teach you how to find this is subhead mask. One day, some mask, something they are given. But from this, how to find the network bits and the host bits. Convert this subhead mask into binary. Subject mask. All ones, all ones. How many ones? Eight, eight. What are? Twenty-four. So twenty-four network bits. Remember, when I say IP address is this, subnet mask is what? Two fifty-five dot two fifty-five dot two fifty-five dot zero. Ones are network bits. Zeros are host bits. Where in subnet mask? In subnet mask, ones are what? Host bits. So how many network bits we have? How many host bits? This is the purpose of subnet mask. That's it. The work is done. Now, same thing. I just like given the formula. Ones are network zeros of host bits. The answer is twenty-four network bits. Eight. We have standard or default subnet mask for all the classes, class A, class B, class C. We have default subnet mask, right? Now, when I say default subnet mask, two fifty dot zero dot zero dot zero, instead of writing like this, two fifty dot zero dot zero dot zero, I can write it another format. That format is called what? Prefix format. Prefix format is same thing, very simplified method. Like right? see here, what I'm saying here. What I am saying here, one twenty two one sixty one dot one slash twenty four means what? Twenty four one. So what is the twenty four one? Twenty four is what? So what is that? Twenty four bits. Remember, twenty four bits is always left to right. Post bits whenever I say it comes from right to left. When you count. Hello. So. Yes. So let me see. Back to me. Back back to me. Very good. Very good. You have to sell one. Very good. See sir. Not at all. 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 मीन्स From left to right, eight bits are network bits, twenty-four bits are host bits. Clear on this? Okay. Any doubt in this? Subnet mask and the prefix. Okay. Next time we will teach you reserved addresses. As I already told you, one twenty-seven is reserved for loopback. See, if you see the class, right? Class A is one to one twenty-six. One twenty-seven will not be there. One twenty-seven is reserved for loopback. Then, then. This is the first self configuration. If you don't give any IP address, your Windows will automatically create one IP address range, free uh, free range. It's called APIPA address. APIPA means automatic private IP address. Third is now every network will have two addresses. So what are they? Discuss about this. Network address. Clear.
Now next is number of networks. So when I have an IP address, how many subnets you can create? There is a formula for that. 2 power n. So n is network base. All comes from the subnet map. If subnet map changes, then all other answers will change. Say, so 2 power n is, will tell you how many sub networks you can create in this IP address. So the answer is, for example, uh, 2 power n, here how many network books we have? In this example, 1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.